Hey, what is up guys? It's Neraku here back yet again for another video. Today I am withholding my savagery to bring you all a truly useful service. I wanted to review Origin Access for a while now, um, so I decided to be a little bit more professional and do just that for you guys. So without any further inconveniences, let's go ahead and get right into the video. I'll start off the review today by taking a moment to talk about what Origin Access is. It's a service for PC and it also has a service called EA Access for Xbox right now. I've had the service for a little over a month now and so far I'm really enjoying it. It's the reason why I've played so many new titles and had them appearing in my videos lately and it's also the reason why I even played Battlefield 1 to begin with. If you think about it, it's very similar to Netflix in the sense that you get a ton of games added to play and to download so as long as they're available and they have them in what's known as the vault. Um, also, it gives you a ton of games for one monthly low price or one yearly low price. So far, no games have been removed from the vault as of yet, and new games have only been added over time. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and talk about some of the games that are available. Currently, Origin Access has about 100 titles or so um, that you can go ahead and download and play immediately. And let's be real here, not all the titles are going to be AAA, 100%, you know, game of the year, most anticipated games. But there are some games out there that are going to be indie, as well as some games that are going to be more casual based. I think Bejeweled is one of them. And who plays Bejeweled? Or who would pay five bucks a month to play Bejeweled? You know, just think about that. Um, so there's going to be a lot of games on the list that you guys may not be interested in. But I would argue that it's going to be very hard for you to find a game on this list that you wouldn't want to play for five bucks a month much less more than one game um, in my case has been several games and since we're talking about that let's go ahead and list some of my favorite titles that i've already downloaded and some of the ones that i'm actually gonna end up playing here your girl knows i've got the sauce no ketchup just sauce raw sauce boom yo ah. the thing goes So those are just a few games I'm going to play soon enough, and as I've previously stated, it's the reason why I've actually been including some more gameplay footage in my videos, and I actually do believe it's a great value. This is not a sponsored video, by the way, and I'm not trying to stroke EA's dick, but I really do think it's a great idea. For once, EA had a good idea. However, no matter how good the idea is, there's always some downsides. So let's go ahead and get into some of those. For instance, the games on the list for Xbox is not as high as the games list for PC. I don't know why this is, but this could be due to licensing issues, maybe some other issues um, that are preventing the games from coming over to Xbox One. For example, Command & Conquer is obviously not going to come over to Xbox One as easily since it doesn't have controller support right away. Um, also, some of these games aren't from this generation, from this current generation, so they're probably not necessarily on Xbox One's backwards compatibility list yet, so that's probably why they're not working, but don't quote me on that. It's the only reason I can seem to think of right now as to why they're not available and why there's such a weird limitation on the amount of games that are available on Xbox One right now. Also, it's not that I've necessarily experienced this firsthand, but when you go ahead and look at some reviews, um, of EA's product so far, I hear that it's nearly impossible to cancel your subscription. Um, I'm not necessarily sure if this is going to be the case on PC as I haven't tried to cancel it yet, but I was able to do it through PayPal, so I'm able to cancel that really easily. As of right now too, it's, it's clearly known that EA's strong suit isn't customer service and they're not necessarily known for being consumer friendly, so I'd watch out for things like that and I'd also take everything that they say with a grain of salt. I wouldn't believe any of their promise necessarily, not right out of the gate, and I wouldn't necessarily buy into their BS. So they're saying that as of right now, they're not going to remove any games from the vault, which is great, but I don't believe that. I find it very hard to believe. At the flip of a switch, they could pull the plug on the amount of games that are currently in the vault. They can remove any game that they want in the vault at any time they want, which kind of begs the question, what's going to happen a year from now? If you go ahead and buy the year subscription, is it really going to be worth it to you? That's where you're going to have to kind of make that choice for yourself. It's very similar to Netflix in the sense that you could sign up for Netflix for a non-original series that is currently on Netflix and three months later that series is now gone. So it kind of has that semi-permanence value that you pay per month for. That's not necessarily a sustained permanent value. You can't download the games and keep them forever. So that's kind of, you know, it's kind of a thing that you would have to consider before buying it yourself. 
As of right now, EA Access and Origin Access are available on PC and Xbox One for about $5 a month or $30 a year. I think that it's an incredible deal if you don't already own a lot of games, like the ones I already mentioned. This is also similar to GameStop's newest program, I can't really remember the name right now, but it lets you rent unlimited used games from them however it's a little bit unknown at this time if the gamestop one is gonna be worth it in the long run because all the details haven't been released yet and we don't know what types of restrictions apply i don't know really what to think about it in the end because this is two companies that really don't have a reputation for trust in the end but they do have two really good sounding programs but i know that i'm probably going to end up skipping on the gamestop deal because i don't really play games on consoles anymore so if you're on the pc Origin Access is a viable option. So, in the end, is it worth it? In short, yes, it's worth it. But that's only for people who don't buy a lot of games each and every year. I find that when I buy games, I like to take my time and really play the games and really get the value out of each and every title that I own. And that's mostly because I don't have time to jump in and out of a lot of different games. Also, my PC library is kind of small at this time. I only have about 50 games or so, and that's pretty tame when you compare it to some of the numbers that some other people have, um, especially the gamers out there who are always buying the latest title. To be completely honest, I don't necessarily have the time to always play a new game. I don't always have the time to go out and buy the latest title. So as a result, EA Access slash Origin Access works really well for me. It's only $30 a year and for that price, it makes it worth it just for games like Titanfall 2 or even the Mass Effect series for me. That is pretty cool. In the end, you would have to make your own decision based on what games you want to play and which games you already own. If you already own plenty of new games, in the end, I'd say go ahead and skip this one. Alright guys, that's it for me. If you guys want to see me do a Let's Play on Mass Effect, just go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below as I have been itching to get back into that series. Also, let me know if you currently have EA slash Origin Access down in the comment section as well. If this video is helpful for you, go ahead and just ever so lightly tongue punch that like button for me. And if you're new here, why not subscribe as I release new content almost every day and stream incredible games like Overwatch every night. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch every single one of you weird AF mofos in the next video. Peace. This is my game. This is my game. Finding the strange. Exposing the way. Hyper lovers be wet. They need to stay over there. These boys are insane. This is my game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh.